So I've been working out for more than a thousand days. Someone who was a lazy a and now I'm a less lazy a So, let's do this. <laughs> that prince, he is so fresh. I made the list easy to remember by making it an acronym that is a word we all use. PISTA! Plan, show up, think, accept. Plan. The idea is eliminate as many barriers as possible to getting you to start. Oh, yeah. uh -oh. Huh? The best thing I do, I've told you this before, I have someone else do the thinking for me. I'm not just saying this because they're the sponsor of this video, but they're the sponsor of this video, Copilot. I love it, I've been using it for more than a thousand days. As long as I've been doing these workout videos. My coach is Nathaniel, he texts me nearly every single day. We are buds. Thanks for making me healthy. I appreciate all your hard work. You're making so many other people healthy. I don't know if you know that or not. He plans all of my workouts. Tomorrow I'm doing this stuff right here. It shows you how to do it. It measures how you're doing it with your watch. It's on iOS and Android. It measures your progress and then he tells me if I need to improve this or that or I tell him if I want to do something else. But usually, I do not do any thinking. I'm like, oh, gotta work out today. Oh, this is the stuff I gotta do. And then I just do it. And it's beautiful. Never have to worry about skipping leg day. Or arm day. Or quad day. Or plod day. Or squad day. And they're offering a 14-day free trial. You just gotta click the link. Or use that QR code right there. And you get your own fitness and health coach. Free. For two whole weeks. One thing I do that really helps is I take out all the clothes I'm going to wear when I work out the next day, place it near my bed. When I get up, I can just put it right on. And then when you have it on, you're like, well, I'm already wearing the clothes. I better do the workout so I can get out of this clothes and be naked the entire day or put on other clothes or whatever. You can also plan what podcast you're going to listen to or what you're going to watch on TV. Plan the snack you're going to have before or after. The clothes are out. It is written down. It was written and therefore it shall be. Sorry. That means it's in motion, so it's gonna help you to stay in motion. I think about like the Mr. Rogers approach. He comes into the house, he puts on like his house shoes, he goes to the door when he's gonna leave and he puts on his walking shoes and set up times a day and other prompts. Now it's time for this. Now it's time yeah. for that. Motivation unfortunately will wane from like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and like Monday to Friday. So if this is just what you do at noon, you just do it. Make a plan. Number two, show up. I know this sounds like the plan show up video. I'm gonna get through the plan show up part and we're gonna get to the other stuff. Duh. Yeah, you gotta show up. How do you do that, Craig? Well, accountability helps if you have a fitness friend, work out with them, go to the gym with them, tell your mom to call you, get a trainer, like through Copilot. I find that if you can, early in the morning is best. I have more motivation early in the morning. That's probably not true for a lot of people, I know. Also, if you decide to show up for the plan and it doesn't work, it does not mean this plan didn't work, therefore no plan will ever work, ever quit. Hard. Just adjust the plan. Make it easier. But sometimes you might just wake up with very low energy. Do a walk instead, or maybe you just stretch instead. Figure out the absolute minimum you're able to do. Do that. And build from there. It's not failing until you absolutely quit. If you're like, I want to work out on Mondays because it makes the most sense for my schedule, but you never make it to Monday, then Monday doesn't work. Number three think. Now I've said in previous workout videos that I love avoiding thinking about it at all. Co-pilot helps me not think, make the plan ahead of time so I don't have to think. For the actual workouts, do not think. But when you're not working out, you have a lot of day left. You're probably going to think about stuff. So when I say think, I mean think after the workout. Well, I have a sub list of things to think about when you're thinking about working out. Think about how you feel. Initially, you're gonna feel pain. If you keep it up, that will pass. If you keep trying to up the ante, it will come back, but it'll be better. Because at that point, you will have painted everything gray except for your sweet ass blue water bottle. Once that initial pain passes, you feel good. I feel better on days I work out. If you don't believe that, I don't know how I'm gonna get you to believe that, but it is 100% true. I feel relaxed. I feel less stressed. Things that normally worry me just don't worry me as much. Unrelated to working out. I'm not sure why. What am I, a body scientist? But another thing to think about, peace of mind. How awesome you are for working out. Yeah, you don't want to blow smoke up your But hey, you worked out. Feel good about it. Especially if you didn't want to. You did the thing you didn't want to do. The thing that was hard. You got up and you did it. That, that should feel good. Think of yourself as a superhero. Don't become a but just think, you know, feel good about yourself. But also, if you're gonna run in a field, watch out for ticks. There's a lot of ticks out there and make sure your cape isn't too long. You might trip, just be careful, okay? Think about how silly working out is. It's funny. I don't know why that motivates me. Before I worked out, I would make fun of the idea. Big muscle men caring about looking really tough all the time. <laughs> I don't care about that. I care about intellectual things 
like Zelda. Which is wrongheaded of me because it's about personal health, taking responsibility. But you do look kind of dumb while you're doing it, you know? But now I enjoy the silliness. I embrace the silliness because it makes it more fun. Can you think of particular workouts that are just silly? Like the donkey kick is kind of funny. Reverse lunge to donkey kick. It's good because I always got donkeys behind me. The fire hydrant is my favorite funny exercise because it very clearly looks like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. We get these big bulbous things right here on our arms, arm boobs, and that somehow indicates that we're tough. The whole thing's stupid, which makes it hilarious. We get sweaty and we smell terrible. My daughter comments on how bad I smell after I work out. Hilarious. Working out, what a ridiculous, dumb, stupid, necessary thing for personal health that makes you feel good. And as you work out longer, think about how capable you are Notice that you can lift certain things with more ease. I can carry my daughter long distances and I'm not winded. In fact, I rarely get winded in general and I have asthma. Pay attention to it. That'll motivate you to keep going. Another thing that surprised me about exercise, I now think about it as an escape. If I'm in the workout room, I'm locked in a room, watching TV, listening to a podcast where I am not even supposed to be worrying about anything else except these tasks that someone's telling me to do. <laughs> that prince. He is so fresh. In my regular daily life, there's all sorts of worries. I gotta write this video. I gotta shoot this video. I gotta edit this video. I gotta make sure the dishwasher was ran. How do I get out of here? Well, for a time, I can go to a little room, move around my arm boobs, and not think about anything else. I mean, unless, you know, someone called, like, upstairs, they're like, Dad, I'm starving. You know, okay. Number four, accept. Accept the initial pain, except that the plan might fail. I talked about this already, we're not gonna talk about it anymore. Except the results. You might not become buff. It might not change your appearance a great deal. For me, that's not what it's about. If it is about that for you, well, then maybe train differently. But it's probably not gonna happen quickly. The improvements to me are great, and I, will, I never want to stop, but they're not extreme. They might be. Maybe I, on a different path, I was gonna have a heart attack at 65. Maybe I still will anyway. I don't know, but maybe I've affected my long term in wonderful ways. I don't know. I'm just going to accept that I don't know. I'm going to accept the results. But here's the big one. Okay. <clears throat> accept that you may never like it. It may never be something you're passionate about, but there's a net positive to doing it on a regular basis regardless. So maybe just eat the frog as they say. I mean, you could literally eat a frog if you want to, but I'm just saying like, it might not be your thing. It might never be your thing. It's still not really 100% my thing. I don't think of myself as a fitness guru, even though I, I keep talking about it. There are days when I don't want to do it and I do it anyway. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but I do kind of like it. But you might not ever, but maybe you still want to do it. Most people seem to think that they should. Came across this video by a fitness guy named Jordan Syatt. Syatt? Syatt. And he frames it in a way I really like. Willful suffering versus unwillful suffering. In life, there are two forms of suffering. You have willful suffering and you have unwillful suffering. Willful suffering is the suffering that you get to choose. Definitely agree with that. It's sort of like prevention versus treatment. If you don't work out, you probably will suffer in ways that you don't control. As you get older, your muscles deteriorate. You get injuries, things get harder. It's like, we're gonna suffer regardless. There's a finite amount of suffering that we're gonna have. Do we wanna control it? Or do we wanna just let it happen how it happens? Working out might be suffering. Is that better than the alternative? Probably, but it still might be hard to motivate yourself. But I'm just saying, that's part of it. Accept, accept the suffering. I think willful suffering is better than unwillful suffering. I wanna do what I want. I wanna suffer my way. Yeah. So there you go. Check out the Copilot app. It does the plan for me. It helps me not think. It helped me willfully suffer until it wasn't even suffering anymore. And I have a friend who checks in, makes sure everything's going good. So you can just click the link and get a 14 day free trial with your own fitness and health coach. Or use the QR code. I still get excited when I get to use a QR code. And thanks for watching. I do a newsletter every Tuesday. Two's better newsletter. Been doing a lot of videos on my second channel, Wheezy News, a lot of unedited walk and talks in the woods during my runs. Not during like runs on the toilet, runs out, runs outside, oh my God. And it's not usually all about my running or workouts. It's about whatever's on my mind, which is usually 
making videos. My life is a circle. It's weird. I do an absurd podcast with my friend Greg Benson called Two Guys Talking About Lettuce. I have a Patreon. I'm still coming to the end of an acupressure challenge where I'm laying on these pokey things every day for a month. Be on the lookout for that. Subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified about it. And, and that'll do it. I think that'll do it. Remember, every time you say PISTA in daily conversation, remember this list. Okay. PISTA.